Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new session in Heart America today. Recently, we have noticed there is one topic where a lot of people have often questions, irrigation. This topic can be complex and long. So let's learn now an introduction to irrigation. This video will be a base to next videos sharing a more deep understanding about this topic. So let's start from scratch. An irrigation system is an hydraulic system that moves liquids from a source to a destination. Hydroponic system using bag of substrate commonly use a meter to transmit liquid to the root zone. All irrigation system use pressure to move water. Pumps, pipes, tubing are usually required and sized, but depending on the type and the size of the system. So which are the key aspects to understand irrigation in a basic level? Let's speak about capacity, uniformity, and control. Capacity. Using an example, drip irrigation systems. We need to understand our irrigation system need to have enough capacity to meet the needs of water movement and nutrient delivery. Simple, each emitter has a particular flow rate that is designed to deliver. If the sum of all flow rates from the meters exceed the capacity of the system, then emitters won't be able to deliver the same amount of water to the plants, reducing also nutrient delivery. In order to have a null capacity, we already learned we need to calculate capacity based on flow of water that must be delivered. We also need to consider the demand of water can change depending on different factors. And we should always prevent to have no capacity for a worst case scenario. Even inside of a greenhouse, water and nutrient delivery can be different. This is why most growers prefer to install a pressure regulator in a smaller sequence. This will allow the grower to have better control of irrigation. We know that depending on environmental conditions, plants will change the requirements of water. If we have cloudy days or we have sunny days during winter, during summer, the requirements of water in the plant will be different. So now we learn that depending on environmental conditions, the requirements of water on the plant can change. And of course, we need to consider this in order to calculate the capacity of the system. But this can also affect another very important characteristic when working with irrigation systems, uniformity. Uniformity is one of the most important characteristics about irrigation for commercial production. Why? Well, uniformity allows you to have more control on different variables that can affect production. Non-uniform systems can cause a delay on days to harvest or even quality. Uniformity can be affected by the type and design of our irrigation system. And of course, we need also to consider substrates. Substrates are pretty important. Type and quality of substrate can affect irrigation uniformity. So how can we improve uniformity, for example, when using a drip irrigation system? High number of emitters with a uniform discharge can help you to keep a more uniform root zone environment. Drip irrigation in comparison to sprinkles can provide more uniformity in an easy way. As we mentioned, uniformity can be affected by the substrate. Some brands have worked really hard developing substrate options to improve uniformity. Grolan is one of those brands. We know Rocco is an excellent option to provide water retention to our plants. This is mostly used for germination, right? However, Grodan has also developed slabs recognized by the excellent conditions provided at the root zone level, including, of course, uniformity to improve crop development.
So here we have an example of a drip irrigation system. We have emitters, we have the drainage. So this is a very small system that we usually use for tests inside of greenhouses. So we usually need to target to have 20 to 30% of drainage. This will help you to flush the system and sometimes also will help you to avoid the retention of salts in the substrate. The percentage is usually crop specific. So a very common number is 20 to 30%, but you can check the percentage that is recommended for a specific group. Irrigation can be a complex topic. The more you learn about it, the more you will find probably things that you never knew before about the impact of irrigation in your crop development. This is such an amazing topic. For example, in tomato, we know that different temperature at the root zone can change not only how the plant take up water, but also nutrients. Nutrient uptake can be different depending on temperature, promoting uptake of specific nutrients. Also, it's very well known that irrigation can have an effect in promoting generative or vegetative growth. Generative growth is stimulated by difference between day and night temperature, high electrical conductivity, watering with low drainage percentage, and reducing irrigation before night. On the other hand, vegetative growth is stimulated by low or no difference between day and night temperature, low electrical conductivity, high drainage percentage, and increase in BPD. Can you notice? Irrigation may appear simpler than what really is. In order to have a real control over our crop, we should study deeply irrigation requirements and the effects that can have an impact in our crop. Well, this was only an introduction to this awesome topic. On the next videos, I will look forward to teach you more until we can reach a more complex level. I hope you enjoyed this session. Please leave any comments and questions and help us sharing this content. Hopefully we can reach more people looking forward to improve understanding in horticulture. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's technical service. You can find me as Professor Grohl in Instagram. See you on the next one.